Hands Hunt Club. I knew I was going to miss the hands part there. Um, it is 150 years ago to the day that Abraham Lincoln rode out to President Lincoln's cottage for the last time. We'll be retracing that route. We are thrilled to have you here with us today, and I hope everyone has a safe and enjoyable ride. We couldn't have ordered better weather. Hillary will be walking the route, and the riderless horse will be first in line, and then everyone will follow there, and we will follow all traffic signals, um, and everyone have a great ride. We will see you back at President Lincoln's Cottage. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everyone to President Lincoln's Cottage. Please be seated. Today is the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's last ride from the White House to the Soldier's Home. This was a ride that was very familiar to him. He first rode out a few days after his inauguration and he retrace, retraced those were roads daily while he lived here at the cottage. He last rode out the day before his fateful visit to Ford's Theater. Tomorrow our country will mark Lincoln's death, but today we celebrate his life. We celebrate the profound and lasting impact of his ideas and his values. He himself said that if his name ever goes into history, it will be for that act, the Emancipation Proclamation, a document he developed here, but a document 
he also recognized was not enough. We celebrate his eagerness to hear and to understand divergent perspectives. The neighborhoods along the commute route offered that diversity to Lincoln and offer us wonderful diversity today. And we celebrate the hope that Lincoln had for the future. Above all, his last ride to the soldier's home reminds us that he was enjoying the present, he was mindful of the past, and eager, eagerly looking ahead to the future. Thank you for joining us on this fine day. As you might imagine, retracing President Lincoln's ride by horseback is a bit of an undertaking, and we are pleased to be joined in our efforts by Mayor Muriel Bowser, the Fort Myer Quezon Platoon, Goshen Hunt Club, Affordable Farm Services Incorporated, Garrett Peck, the Washington Friends of Walt Whitman, the Rainbow History Project of Washington, D.C., Bruce Monroe Elementary School at Parkview, the crew of the USS Abraham Lincoln, D.C. Public Library, the D.C. Film Office, and of course the Metropolitan Police Department. At this point we need to diverge from our program because Mayor Bowser has been held up um, by a budget hearing. Um, but I'd also like to offer a special thanks to all of the staff of President Lincoln's Cottage who helped in this effort, especially Hillary Malson, Michelle Martz, and Callie Hawkins who walked the entire commute route today. I am delighted now to introduce Bonnie J. Morris, who is in her 20th year on the faculty of the Women's Studies program at George Washington University and teaches part-time at Georgetown University as well. After earning a bachelor's in Jewish history from American University, where she was the first student to minor in women's studies, she completed her PhD in women's history at Binghamton University in 1989. She soon joined the faculty of Harvard Divinity School and has taught semester at sea twice. In winter 2012, GW students voted her Professor of the Year. Dr. Morris is the author of 12 books, has published essays in over 60 anthologies, and wrote a one-woman play performed in seven countries. She has also worked for 14 years with Mother Tongue, DC's spoken word stage for women. Her publications have been finalists for the Lambda Literary Award and New England Book Festival, and won prizes from Jane Stories Press, Knob Hill, Pen Women, and Finishing Line Press. She's appeared on C-SPAN Book TV's in-depth author profile, won a 10-day residency at the Hedgebrook Retreat for Women Writers. Dr. Morris also sits on the board of directors of the Rainbow History Project. The Rainbow History Project collects, preserves, and promotes an active knowledge of the history, arts, and culture relevant to sexually diverse communities in the metropolitan Washington, D.C. area. Dr. Morris will be reciting O Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Morris. Thank you so much. Good afternoon to you. Uh, thank you very much for coming out on this solemn occasion. O Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. O Captain, My Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting while follow eyes the steady keel the vessel grim and daring but oh heart 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 oh the bleeding drops of red where on the deck my captain lies fallen cold and dead oh captain my captain rise up and hear the bells rise up for you the flag is flung for you the bugle trills for you bouquets and ribboned wreaths for you, the shores are crowding. For you, they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored, safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells, but I, with mournful tread, walk the deck, my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Thank you. Um, we will now be changing the program yet again. 
Um, Mayor Bowser extends her uh, regrets, but she got pulled into yet another meeting. So we will now um, uh, welcome Garrett Peck up to the front, and he will be reading the essay that Walt, Min Walt Whitman wrote, um, I See the President. Garrett. This comes from an article that Walt Whitman wrote for the New York Times on August 12, 1863, called Washington in the Hot Season. And Walt had lived here in D.C. since the very beginning of the year and found a lodging very close to the White House. And he wrote this article for the, for the New York Times, and, and he became so proud of this particular article, so he kept republishing it. He republished it in memoranda during the war and later on in specimen days. He wrote, I see the president almost every day as I happen to live where he passes to or from his lodgings out of town. He never sleeps at the White House during the hot season, but has quarters at a healthy location some three miles north of the city, the soldier's home, a United States military establishment. I saw him this morning about 8.30, coming into business, riding on Vermont Avenue near L Street. He always has a company of 25 or 30 cavalry with sabers drawn and held upright over their shoulders. They say this guard was against his personal wish, but he lets his counselors have their way. The party makes no great show in uniform or horses. Mr. Lincoln is on the saddle, generally rides a good-sized, easy-going gray horse, is dressed in plain black, somewhat rusty and dusty, wears a black, stiff hat, and looks about as ordinary in attire and etc. as the commonest man. I see very plainly Abraham Lincoln's dark brown face with the deep cut lines, the eyes, always to me with a deep latent sadness in the expression. We have got so that we exchange bows and very cordial ones. None of the artists or pictures has caught the deep, though subtle and indirect expression of this man's face. There is something else there one of the great portrait painters of two or three centuries ago is needed. Thank you. I always have to pause on those lines where Whitman says there is something else there, um, because I think that's still true. We're still learning so much more about Lincoln today. So it's not even about capturing the man visually, but really about understanding who Lincoln was as a person and the ideas that meant so much to him and how we all together have a role to play in finishing uh, Lincoln's unfinished work. Uh, we will conclude the program today with a wreath laying uh, with the crew of the USS Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. USS Abraham Lincoln, attention. I'd once again like to thank the riders of the Fort Myers Quezon Platoon, the Goshen Hunt Club, and the crew of the USS Abraham Lincoln, as well as Dr. Morris and Mr. Peck for joining us today. Thank you all. I hope this was a memorable day for you as it was for us. Thank you. Thank you.